Hi, I'm Jay Rank, Planning Manager, uh, and soon you'll hear from Dave Goldenbaum, Service Planner here at MTD. Uh, we are introducing proposed service changes for the fall like we normally would at our annual open house. We plan to present our proposed service changes to give an opportunity for feedback prior to them being implemented for our August 16th new service year. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we're doing this virtually uh, and we'll be available to take questions and respond accordingly. So uh, the first and most exciting change we're proposing is a change to uh, I-stops. All routes will now be eligible at I-stops and we propose expanding the number of I-stops. Normally, only campus routes at I-stops are fare free. Community routes require a fare. This means that everybody needs to learn what a community route is versus what a campus route is. And with the ever changing student population, there's a need for constant education. And this has led to a lot of frustration. So we believe this change will reduce confusion, be much easier to communicate, reduce the conflict at the door when the passenger is showing their, their I-card when they don't need to, or not having their I-cards ready when a fare is required. It should reduce dwell time by loading at all the doors uh, and improve safety by not trying to close the doors rapidly to prevent passengers from boarding the bus at the back door when a fare is required. So in August, every route that serves I-stops will be fare free. This is generally within the boundaries of White Street to the north, Lincoln Avenue to the east, Vet Med and Research Park to the south, and the railroad to the west. Uh, this is expanding into new areas, including White Street uh, and Research Park. Also includes Green Street uh, from Oak to Lincoln. Uh, this, the, the current I stops on North Lincoln, um, including Campus Circle, north, one north, one south, and Capstone quarters will continue to be I stops. So hopefully this will improve scheduled adherence without much of a budget impact. The next change we're proposing uh, is around the Marketplace Outer Drive area. We've been working with Marketplace to address some of the concerns about safety, the pavement, and the landscaping. So we propose changing the routing of a few routes to avoid using the south half of the Marketplace Outer Drive. For the 1 slash 100 North Yellow heading towards Marketplace, we propose using Market to Anthony to Neal to Market View and back to Market instead of using the current routing which uses Market to Market View to Neal to the Marketplace Outer Drive to enter the mall. And the 1 slash 100 South Yellow would be reversed. The 2 slash 20 C Red routing um, towards the mall uh, would use Neal to Market View to Market to the Marketplace Northeast entrance instead of using Neal to Marketplace Outer Drive to enter the mall. This change allows us to maintain uh, the service that we feel is appropriate, including service to Salvation Army Store, the Living Alternative Pregnancy Resource Center off of Market Street, as well as the Coles and McDonald's area on Market View. And this shouldn't affect the route time-wise. The next changes we propose uh, are some MCOR-related uh, routing and stop changes. Um, we propose consolidating 6th and Armory Northwest Corner and the 6th and Gregory Northwest Corner stops to a 6th and Armory Southwest Far Side stop by the Band Building for routes to continue south on 6th Street like the blue, the brown, and the silver. The Far Side stops are better for traffic flow. This will help us um, get through the traffic light if it's a green light and then get out of the way instead of blocking everyone uh, from getting through the light because we're stopped boarding or alighting passengers. This is a trend we've been using uh, with the MCOR uh, changes um, as far as uh, far side stops through the intersections. This is important with the new stoplight phases that have pedestrian scrambles in all walks. Uh, next we propose changing the 1 slash 100 south yellow routing to use 6th to Armory to 4th to Gregory. This replaces the current routing of 6th to Gregory when we make a very difficult turn from 6th southbound to Gregory westbound. The stops at 6th and Armory and 6th and Gregory will be replaced by one at 5th and Armory northwest far side by the ice arena. This decision is primarily to help with safety and congestion. Uh, we propose uh, a stop change for on the 1 slash 100 North Yellow, uh, where the 4th and Armory Southeast Corner stop will be moved to 5th and Armory Southwest Corner. The stop at 4th and Armory causes congestion, and stopping on Armory after the turn will improve safety and traffic flow. 
Uh, now here are a few changes proposed to simplify service uh, and reduce the number of footnotes and diversions. On the 10 gold, we propose removing the W footnote at the 625 10 West Gold trip and rerouting the diversion back to the normal 10 West Gold routing. This was part of a universal transfer at green and right that is no longer maintained. Uh, we also propose removing the T footnote from the 625 10 East Gold trip and rerouting the diversion back to the regular 10 East Gold routing. Uh, a new 10 East Gold trip will start at 632 at Mattis and Broadmoor. This is done for similar reason to clean up some diversions and to make the service more understandable. The next change is for the 13 Silver. We propose removing the 525 13 South Silver trip uh, with a J footnote. The trip currently does half of a 13 South Silver trip but diverts Springfield to right to green to start a 2U red trip at the Alina Union. This proposal is to end the, the prior trip at Lincoln Square at 520 at the 13 North and have the bus deadhead to the Alina Union to start the 535 2U red trip at Lincoln Square to reduce the confusion. Next, we propose uh, a stop change unrelated to MCOR on the 22-220 Alina route. We propose consolidating the Goodwin and Clark southeast corner stop uh, on, the, on North Goodwin uh, for the 22 and 220 Alina routes. There are too many stops on North Goodwin Avenue based on our stop spacing guidelines, and this one is a safety concern because cars try to pass the bus while making the stop, causing visibility issues uh, for both pedestrians and vehicles. Additionally, there's no crosswalk at this intersection. And next, we'll talk about a few uh, schedule or trip specific changes. On the two, U, uh, the two red, uh, we propose moving the 2C red 8.38 a.m. trip uh, at Lincoln Square to match the Gold East trip at 8.40. Uh, this will have an effect on a few time points, but the bus will make up the time before it reaches campus. And on the 70 gray, uh, we propose extending two weekday 70 East gray evening trips from Lincoln Square to Maine and Brady. Uh, the two trips previously ended at Lincoln Square at 11.07 p.m. and 11.29 p.m., but we'll now end at Maine and Brady at 11.18 and 11.40 p.m. respectively. Likewise, we propose extending the 270 East Gray Saturday evening trip similarly. They're currently ending at Lincoln Square at 10.58 and 11.33 p.m. and will now end at Maine and Brady at 11.09 and 11.44 p.m. respectively. This offers better service for the eastern part of the Gray route uh, towards the end of service, especially after the Universal transfer at 1111 at Illinois Terminal. And now Dave will talk about the green route and some school trips. Thanks, Jay. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Dave Goldenbaum. I'm the new service planner here at MTD. And uh, I wanted to wrap up the uh, field that Jay was talking about here with one last change to the 50 West Green evening and weekend route. We're going to be making a, a minor time point change. Uh, the reason this bus was getting ahead by over two minutes near Philo Road in Colorado it resulted in, in an unintentional layover. So our proposed changes are to add a couple of minutes to the route in an earlier section where it had some extra time. This will result in two time points being altered by a minute each, Vine and Windsor and then Meyer at Amber Lane which will now be two minutes later. Other than that, no change to the 30-minute frequency. Uh, the layover that we are trying to avoid may still occur at Meyer, but that is a preferred location to the present location on Philo Road. So now I wanted to talk about uh, some changes to the school routes. Uh, there are four proposed changes that I need to discuss with you today, and uh, we'll have some maps up to help illustrate this as well. The first of those changes uh, is that we're combining the morning 16A pink number two and 16A pink number three routes. These serve Turnberry Ridge, Boulder Ridge, and Sawgrass to Centennial School uh, High School and Jefferson Middle School. The reason that we're doing this is that these pink routes were set up using ridership estimations originally uh, there were two buses assigned to this area to meet anticipated ridership needs. Uh, 
but actual ridership has been less than expected. And as a result, it does not warrant two separate buses. One bus will do the trick. Uh, and these routes are very similar. So the route change proposal, the 16A pink number three, is going to be eliminated and replaced with the pink number two. Same route, except that we're adding Boulder Ridge to the 16A pink number two. Uh, that is Bluegrass to Boulder Ridge to Farley to Pebblebrook. And as far as the time change is concerned, uh, the route is going to begin five minutes earlier. And that would be at 715 at Kirby and Cobblefield in Turnberry Ridge, instead of the present time, which is at 720. So the second proposed change is using that freed up resource, the other bus that we have saved from the Morning Pink route, uh, we're going to be adding another bus where it is needed. Uh, and that is the morning one south yellow route that serves North Prospect, Ashland Park, and North Market Street. Uh, this bus goes to Franklin, Edison, and Jefferson Middle Schools. So one south yellow is going to change to the one south yellow number one and then number two. So the one south yellow number one is going to provide service from North Prospect, Ashland Park, and Town Center Boulevard, and the number two will provide service from the North Market area. That was all being handled by one bus prior. So the reason here is that that one south yellow had been consistently at capacity and that was using a 60 foot articulated bus. So this will be uh, more space for the kids getting to school in the morning. Also more efficient. Empty, uh, the route itself is not going to change on the one south yellow until it stops at Town Center Boulevard and Neal where it will turn south onto Neal and Bradley and then resume its regular dropout uh, route to the middle schools. Uh, the new route is going to pick up at that spot at Neal and Bradley, uh, actually at Neal and Marketplace West Entrance and, th and it will travel south and Market Street picking up students and again follow the same route to middle school drop off as the one south yellow. I did want to mention there will be no time change to that. Uh, the One South Yellow currently uh, begins at Boardwalk in Baytown at 7 a.m. and that will remain unchanged. The new One South Yellow 2 that starts at Neal and Marketplace will start at 7.07 a.m. Our third proposed change is shortening the afternoon 3 North Lavender route serving Jefferson Middle School. This route goes to Gardens Hills, Dobbins Downs, and Ashland Park. We're also going to be extending the 7 East Gray route from Jefferson Middle School and Edison Middle School to 5th and Bradley and North Market. And we're also going to be serving Town Center Boulevard with that route. I'm going to explain what this is. The 3 North Lavender route from Jefferson Middle School had been serving Garden Hills, Dobbins Downs, Ashland Park, Town Center Boulevard, and North Market. This was one of the longest and most crowded afternoon school routes here at MTD. Immediately following the conclusion of this run, the bus returns to Centennial High School uh, where it was due at 3.30 p.m. as a 7 East Gray and was consistently behind schedule. So by shortening the 3 North Lavender route to no longer s serve all of this area, the bus will be able to remain on time returning to Centennial. Uh, Jefferson students heading to Town Center Boulevard and North Market, instead of taking the 3 North Lavender, will now take the 7 East Gray. It departs Jefferson at the same time and will arrive to North Market and Town Center actually several minutes earlier. And ridership counts uh, indicate that there should be more than sufficient seating for students moving from the 3 North Lavender to the 7 East Gray. Uh, as far as the route change, the 3 North Lavender route from Jefferson is not going to change until its new ending point at Tolson and Interstate after servicing Ashland Park. The 7 East Gray route from Jefferson and Edison also will be unchanged until it gets to its current ending point at Marketplace and Outer Drive. Uh, Marketplace, Outer Drive, and Neal will be extended to Town Center and Prospect just a little bit. There's no time change for either of these routes. Uh, that's also another nice aspect of this proposal. Uh, both will be leaving Jefferson Middle School at 2.45 as usual. The 7 East Gray, which boards at Edison, will still board at 2.55 p.m. So no changes time-wise. Final change. Uh, this is something that uh, 
It has several different components to it. So a little background, Champaign Unit 4 had approached MTD and advised us that they are planning some construction for Edison Middle School in the fall and that this would result in some students being temporarily relocated to Columbia School. Now this is located at the corner of Neal and Bradley. So MTD agreed to prepare changes to existing morning routes serving Edison Middle School beginning this fall to assist those students needing transportation to Columbia School. So there are a total of eight affected morning routes. Uh, the first two we've already discussed. That is the one south yellow, number one and number two. Uh, from North Prospect, Ashland Park, Town Center Boulevard, North Market. Uh, these serve Franklin, Edison and Jefferson and now Columbia School as well. So Columbia will be the first drop off point uh, along these routes. There are no other changes to the routes otherwise. The times that we discussed on those again were, are not, not going to be changed except for the number two which is a new route. The 16A pink number one from Turnberry Ridge, Sawgrass, Boulder Ridge that serves Edison and Franklin Middle Schools will also be serving Columbia now. This route's going to begin five minutes earlier at 7 a.m. from Kirby and Cobblefield and that will support drop off at Columbia School and the other uh, middle schools at the same time Columbia School will be dropped off approximately 7.43 a.m. there. The one north yellow uh, morning school run from Winfield Village to Edison, Central, and Franklin will also be adding Columbia. We're going to begin this route six minutes earlier. This is the biggest change. We're trying to keep things as close as we can here, but that extra six minutes will be important on this one. So it'll begin at 7.02 from First and St. Mary's. The route's going to remain unchanged. Um, the Columbia School students will be dropped off at the southeast corner of Randolph and Beardsley at approximately 739 and then it continues to Franklin. Getting close. Four more changes to discuss on these routes for Columbia. The next one is the 7 West Gray uh, from 5th and Bradley to Edison and Jefferson Middle Schools will also be serving Columbia. This route's going to also begin five minutes earlier, 7.05 a.m. now from 5th and Bradley. Uh, it will change its route diverting from University Avenue to Randolph to serve Columbia School approximately 718 in the morning and then continue down State Street to Edison where it will resume its schedule uh, run at the same time as before. Central Express, uh, the 9B Brown also known as from Devonshire that serves Edison, Central and Franklin will also be serving Columbia. This route will begin five minutes earlier at 7.16 a.m. from Prospect in Windsor. And this route also remains unchanged. Uh, Columbia School students will be dropped off the southeast corner of Randolph and Beardsley at approximately 7.42 and then the route continues to Franklin. The 3 South Lavender from North Prospect in Garden Hills to Central and Edison will also serve Columbia now. Uh, this route will also begin five minutes earlier at 6.55 a.m. from Neal and Town Center. The rem route also remains unchanged until after Edison where it will continue via Green to Randolph to Columbia. So the Columbia School drop-off is the final drop-off on this route. Last but not least, the 7 East Gray from Parkland Ridge, Timberland and Westlake areas to Edison will also be serving Columbia. Same as the route before, it will be after uh, serving Edison. Uh, this route will begin six minutes earlier as well at 6.54 a.m. from Clayton and Duncan. Um, no change to the route other than that. That's all I have. Um, we look forward to any comments or questions, and we appreciate you tuning in and giving us some of your, your time and thoughts. Thank you so much.